Jessica. Well, I first um, started probably about 15 years ago. I was looking for a bit of a stress release from my IT job at the time that I'd been doing for about 15 years. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, why not take on a part-time you know, a hobby, which I did and I loved it. I've never looked back and I've been doing it for 15 years. It's a totally different world totally. to what you had yeah, before. Yeah, totally. Now, you were born in Melbourne, but you were brought up in rural Victoria. Correct. Would you say that is an inspiration in your work? Absolutely. I spent the first 20 years of my life growing up on a farm. It was only a couple of years ago that I realised how much that influenced my work, you know, growing right. up on the farm. Yeah. Um, you know, it was really, we went through a lot of drought. When I was younger, I still remember, you know, we have beef cattle, we have cropping. And so that kind of everyday life growing up, up on the farm was big influence in, in what I create, as you can see from my colours, my mm -hmm. work. Yeah, and also my travels too. I've been to Broome a lot, and um, which is one of my favourite places to unwind. And that, that's where the redness comes out from Correct. as well, yeah? Yeah, I really love Broome. It's one of my favourite places. Mm -hmm. So. Um, a lot of inspiration comes from there. So you would say the environment actually reflects in the colours that Absolutely, you use? Absolutely, yes. And so it's not just my farming background or, you know, my childhood years. It's also um, just everyday things, the everyday environment, the trees, um, the beach is a bit of an influence. Obviously, I live right near the beach. Mm -hmm. um, listening to a song, going out with a friend um, for dinner, conversing over a beautiful meal. A lot of those influences and my travels, obviously, I've travelled a lot, but not to Malta yet. But not to Malta yet. <laughs> not to okay. Malta yet. Would you think that going to Malta would influence, because, you know, Malta is all um, sandstone and the yes. blue, obviously, of the water. How would, how would you think that would influence oh, in your work? Absolutely. I, th I think that just the beautiful architecture, there's so much history that we just don't have here in Australia. And I think that would be, I think I'm kind of, well, I don't. I wouldn't say it has influenced my my creativity, obviously, because I haven't been there. But I think the colours I would really definitely relate to, and obviously the blues. You know, you see a lot of my my colours, um, or a lot of my work has a little bit of blue in it now, yeah. and um, that's definitely reflective of the ocean and you know the beautiful seas and. Mediterranean, so I can see a little bit of all that happening. Tell us more about the process of, of having, you know, from having a lump of clay yep. to the actual finished products that we're seeing here. Is it a long process and what's it involved is. in it? Yeah, it is, Marlene. It, um, there is definitely a long process. It's not just a matter of, you know, getting a lump of clay and making something and, you know, wham, and in one day it happens. It takes a, a number of weeks before things are actually um, realised. Mm -hmm. Um, I do a lot of my work on the on the pottery wheel, uh -huh. um, which is great, and so a lot of my dinnerware and tableware, um, obviously that goes into restaurants and that sort of thing, um, you know, is done on the um, the wheel. Um, but I also do a lot of hand formed pieces as well, and they take a long time. The larger the piece, the longer it takes of because of the drying. Uh -huh. And so if you if you rush things, um, even if you rush the process, things dry too quickly and things crack, and then you've got to start all over again. Yeah. So there is a it's a, it's a long process with the handmade. Uh, you mentioned um, uh, tableware and restaurants. Yes. Actually, it's gotten to be quite trendy to have um, ceramics um, as part of the tableware yes. in restaurants. And you actually do have a lot of your um, tableware actually out in restaurants. Yeah. Tell us more about that. Yeah. And, and why? Why has it become so trendy? I think over the years we've moved from this white um, tableware, which is still be really beautiful, which is mass produced. So, um, you know, if everything looks completely perfect at a restaurant, so next time you go to a restaurant, you see everything <laughs> completely perfect, you can see that it's actually come out of a mold or yeah. a press mold. There's no character, sort no, of. No, that's yeah. right, and it's all quite uniform. But for me, what I really love is something really unique, and I think it speaks to the food. So the food and and the ceramics. They play a really important part um, in, you know, emphasising the beautiful food and just bringing the food to life. So, yeah, I do. I've worked with a lot of chefs. I'm currently working with a really lovely chef in Mount Martha at the moment. Mm -hmm. And we're collaborating and doing some really bespoke um, tableware for his restaurant. Right. It's really lovely. But yeah, my work has been featured in so many different magazines. Yeah, yeah. Better Homes and Gardens, Nourish, um, Donna Hay magazine. Oh, there's so many and I'm going to forget, but I've worked with a lot of chefs, um, Cara Martini, George Calambaris. How is it working with the different chefs? Like, do you take on their personality as well and put it into your work? Yeah, I do. It's a, actually quite an involved process. So yeah. a lot of the time I'll sit down with the chef. We will actually talk about um, 
We will look at if they're doing a refurbishment in the, in the restaurant, we will look at the interiors, we'll look at the interior colour, the actual tables, what the table's actually made of, how many seats, like it's, it's very involved. So I actually don't just design the work, well I do design the work um, and design the pieces, but often I will have a look at the menu and I'll create something very special to that menu. Around that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I'll work very closely with the chef. And so we'll do multiple samples and then we'll, I'll go back and we'll go, this works, this doesn't work. So everything has to work yeah. in conjunction with each other. So It's really yeah. putting your soul into it, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. And, and it yeah. comes out like um, when you actually touch, um, uh, you know, stoneware, um, you can feel it's very just, organic, right? It, it is. Yeah, it is. really, it's got really such organic. Such a beautiful feel to it. I have been finding that, particularly in the last few years, that chefs are moving towards handmade, and they're actually approaching a lot of artists like myself. So, rather than going to the big sort of places for their tableware, they're coming directly to the artists mm -hmm. and um, getting something that's really unique to their restaurant. And yeah. I think that's great. It's really great for artists as well, because at the end of the day, we need to make money that's right. as well. And it's a very, um, it's, not a, it's not an easy way to make money, um, but it's the best and it's the most enjoyable experience. I do not one day regret giving up my corporate career to do this. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's just, there's a lot of pleasure and a lot of enjoyment out of that. Sarah, you've also been nominated and you've been a finalist in quite a few awards. Yes. Tell us more about that. And, and how do you feel like seeing your, your artwork, because it's artwork, being yeah. appreciated? Yeah, look, I love it. Um, my most recent award I was in was this year, early in the year. Um, it was the Victorian Craft Award mm -hmm. through Craft Victoria. And I was nominated, I think there was about 100 um, finalists out of several hundred people. Okay. Um, in Australia and that's that's just a great achievement and and um, you know it's actually good experience to get yourself into some of these awards yeah. um, you know and I've had some sculptures actually I don't do a lot of sculpture work at all but you know I occasionally do a little bit of sculpture and um, they got into an, a big international award in Sydney a couple of years ago which was great yeah. um, I think it's great I don't place too much emphasis on awards um, for me, it's really about connecting with people, mm -hmm. um, doing something that I really love 